Welcome to the Super Managers Podcast, where we interview leaders from all walks of life to tease out the habits, thought patterns, learnings, and experiences that help them be extraordinary at the fine craft of management. Our goal is to bring you the lessons and the insights so that you don't have to learn through your own mistakes, but so that you can shortcut your way to being a great leader. This podcast is brought to you by Fellow, a software platform that helps managers and their teams work better together. Check it out at www.fellow.app. If you have the ability as a manager to take care of a task more quickly than anybody else on the team, Whereas it would take your whole team like a week to do it. You should just do it yourself. It's fine. I think sometimes a lot of managers think, oh, I'm a manager now. I shouldn't be doing the work myself. I'll just delegate it. The problem is if you just delegate it and then the person who you delegated to delegates it and then it gets delegated all the way down the chain, you'll end up with the least qualified people in the company doing all of the work. And that can be a problem, right? I mean, everything gets infinitely delegated down to like the summer intern or something like that. So you want the person who's in the best position to do the work such that you will maximize the output to do the work. And sometimes that means you delegate it. Sometimes it means that you do it yourself. For a decision, if you can reverse the decision, or on the side of just making it, because as an organization, we want to optimize for learning and improving. And if you can reverse what you decided easily, you're going to overall win through having a higher quantity of decisions. And this sounds really counterintuitive, but the quality of the decisions doesn't matter if they are irreversible. So it actually doesn't matter whether you make the right choice or not. What matters is, did you decide anything? Because you'll know within an hour if you were wrong and then you can just do the other thing, as opposed to spending three days having some kind of major discussion. My number one thing is always going to be to encourage this person, obviously, to give the feedback directly, as you just said, unless it's unsafe for them to do so. There's certainly a very small percentage of circumstances in which there's a really toxic employee or harm might come to someone if they give this feedback. Those are really the only instances where I, before doing anything else, would go kind of try to step in and give this feedback directly. Otherwise, I would coach them through how to give this feedback in a way that might land. And when I say land, I mean it might be heard by the other person, hopefully will amygdala hijack the other person and also motivate this other person to change their behavior and do something differently. And that's like a lot to do with a piece of feedback, which is why I spend so much time trying to coach people through what that looks like. Providing recognition and acknowledgement to everyone's doing all the way down to the operational person who might not really be clear that they were part of something, but to me or the leader would recognize what their role is and provide them recognition to the sale, I think is the number one thing that leaders should be looking out for. The number two is it is very similar. Do we all know why we're here? Do we all know what we want to accomplish and what success looks like? And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a sale. It could be a tax restructuring. It could be a new or better, more efficient use of the way that we operate, where we could save millions of dollars by doing something different from an operational perspective without ever increasing the top line and so kind of making sure that we all know what the end result is the most important thing you all can do is to be wide open to feedback of any sort whether it's feedback about your performance feedback about something that's going on on the team or probably hardest to hear but most important to hear feedback that you've said or done something that is biased or even worse prejudiced or bullying and so be open don't just be open to it but go out it's like you're digging for gold clarity is all about asking the right questions there's kind of three stages that you go through the first one is to define it and the questions that we look at when you're defining it they're not that complicated but too often they get skipped you know first one is why Why are we doing it? Why should anybody care? The second one is who? Who's it for and what's in it for them? Now, the third question that goes with it is, so what exactly do we want? What is our end product? What will we have in our hands at the end of it? And then the fourth question that goes with this is, how will we know we've succeeded? And that question is the one that's perhaps missed the most, is how will we know we've arrived when we've got to the end point, we've got to the destination? Because you've got to be really, really crystal clear on this. And the goals that get those things right really start to shift. I guess people are busy up and down, right? Everyone is busy. And so sometimes repetition is what's needed to help people know that you're really serious, right? Because if all you do is like jump at every single sort of hint of an idea or an instruction or an issue or whatever, you will find yourself overreacting way too much. 
And I think everybody knows this. Hopefully my engineering team knows this to some extent, that there are times when as a manager, right, you'll realize that, oh crap, I didn't realize that they took that thing I said as an offhand comment as like an instruction to go change their whole roadmap. And I think experienced people who have been through that realize that like, yeah, if the boss is really serious, she'll say it again. <laughs> Or, you know, they kind of know how to check the seriousness of a statement. So I think it's just, you know, we're all human, we're all busy. We've all got our own impressions of things. Repeating yourself helps it sink in, helps people really understand what you're saying and makes it clear that it's serious. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Super Managers Podcast. You can find the show notes and transcript at www.fellow.app slash supermanagers. If you like the content, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe so you can get notified when we post the next episode. And please tell your friends and fellow managers about it. It'd be awesome if you could help us spread the word about the show. See you next time.